A global ecological collapse forces people to voluntarily reduce their population, leading a rich family to fight over who gets to die. With the ecological collapse, resources began dwindling, so the United Nations created the Athens Accord. This mandates the reduction of each nation's population by 20% within a year. As people line up for water rations, men in white extract an enlisted body while Bob hands the relative some money. At the York Manor, two men move a piano into the master bedroom. While they do this, the TV shows Jared York, who supports enlistment even of the younger generation. He even highlights how children, like his son, should know what's at stake if they don't meet the 20% reduction within the year. The head of the family, Charles, shakes his head as he watches this. Later, Charles dumps his liquor down the drain while his wife, Dawn, prepares food. She then starts weeping, so Charles embraces her. All the while, the news reports about the rumors suggesting that the Department of Citizen Strategy, or DOCS, which handles the enlistment, is getting militarized. In other news, York Therapeutics CEO, Rachel, is being sued due to painful side effects of their medications. Later, Jared arrives while on the phone with his wife, Beth, who berates him for suggesting that their son should enlist. He asks to talk to his son to comfort him, but Beth refuses to even let him come home. Upstairs, Charles peels the protective film on the window, wincing at the sunlight though he still basks in it. Soon, Rachel arrives with her reluctant daughter, Mia. Charles reminds Rachel that this is an adults-only gathering, and his daughter explains that Mia was devastated after seeing the news about the lawsuit, so she couldn't leave her. Outside, Noah lingers and calls his girlfriend Grace, telling her he's not ready to hijack his father's gathering. Grace comforts him and promises a relaxing night later to encourage him. Noah still turns away, but his sister, Ashley, drives by and stops him from leaving. She informs him that she landed a role in a commercial, whining that her years of theater school amounted to this. As they prepare to go into the house, Ashley spots Noah reading a message from Grace, leaving him no choice but to explain that she's his girlfriend, whom he met at an AA meeting. They soon enter the house, and Charles welcomes Noah with open arms. With everyone present, Dawn prepares a Japanese dinner for them. Noah praises her appetizer, saying her customers must love it. However, Ashley whispers that Dawn's restaurant closed down. Charles then starts a toast, saying that he's glad everyone's here despite his occasional absence due to work. Later, just before dessert, Rachel demands their father explain why he invited them. With the couple holding hands, Charles and Dawn finally reveal that they've decided to enlist. The news shocks everyone and Rachel tells her daughter to leave the room. After she's gone, Jared asks why they'd enlist when they don't need the money. Charles explains that, as a war correspondent, he covered all manner of ecological disasters. He decided not to have children to fight over population, but he still did. Since their country is behind on depopulation, there's talk about drafting people. If they enlist, they can spare their children from being drafted. Jared, however, insists that none of them would get drafted because of their status. Rachel then asks Dawn if she agreed to this, so the woman explains that since they're public figures, it would set a great example. Ashley realizes that they're doing this to elevate the York name. All his children ended up being embarrassments, so by doing this, Charles can have the York name be associated with self-sacrifice. Noah then slams the table, pointing out that Charles said he wanted to spend more time with them, yet he decided to enlist. Because of the tension, Dawn tells everyone to reconvene later at dessert. Later. Noah tries to convince his father that, according to his group, the enlistment numbers are greater than what the news says, so the drafting might not happen. Jared assumes that Noah got this information from someone anonymous online. He then defends the legislation, reasoning that it benefited the families of undocumented immigrants and insists that docs will never skew their numbers. Charles, however, questions why he would trust a man who defends the same government that denied climate change in the past. He even points out that the administration publicly blamed Asia for starting the crisis, which caused people to burn down Dawn's restaurant. Despite this, Jared sarcastically wonders if he should consult with Noah's conspiratorial support group. Ashley scolds him, but accidentally mentions that Noah met his girlfriend at the support group. Everyone is shocked, so Noah defends how Grace has been clean for 10 years. Adding to the other's surprise, Charles wonders about his girlfriend, so Noah shows her picture to him. The father then excuses himself to help Dawn, while Mia scrolls through Facebook and sees the harmful memes about her mother. Charles soon returns to his children, alerting them that Dawn left. This leads Rachel to realize that they already enlisted. Just then, Bob arrives earlier than expected when Charles scheduled them for tonight. When the docs representative learns that Dawn left, 
Charles negotiates for them to come back once he's spoken to his wife. However, Bob asks Charles to speak in private to sign the cancellation papers. In his office, Charles examines the document while Bob looks at his accolades, commenting that other people of power destroyed lives except for him. However, his clean name might be shamed if something comes to light. Suddenly, Charles rejects signing the paper, horrified by its contents. However, the doc's representative merely says that he won't stop being a fan, regardless of what list Charles ends up in. Soon enough, the father hesitantly faces his family in the kitchen. Late that afternoon, in Charles's bedroom, his children gather around while Noah plays the piano. Ashley wonders why he's doing this without Dawn. So Charles just explains that, even without her, he's still set on doing this for them. He then apologizes for not being a better father to them. With his goodbyes set, Bob administers the chemicals that end his life. After Charles's body is removed, Bob announces that he came here for two bodies. Suddenly, two armed men arrive, causing a panic. Bob explains that they have two hours to decide since they have another appointment. However, he assures them that Mia's exempted because they don't get paid for young people. Jared decides to call his associates from the administration, but Bob announces that they jammed the house to avoid wasting time. He then asks for Mia to wait in the truck, assuring them that she'll be safe and be spared from seeing what'll happen in the next two hours. Realizing what he means, Rachel urges her daughter to go. Ashley argues that they should be looking for Dawn, but Bob informs them that they already are. But the chances of finding her are low. Suspicious, Noah asks how he convinced his father to proceed. Bob explains that canceling their enlistment will entail imprisonment, frozen assets, and getting listed in the National Cowards List, which shames everyone who turns their backs from the government. He then reveals that people backing out from enlisting happens often, so the government does background checks on their families to smoothen the process of deciding who to take their place. He starts with Jared's document, saying his girlfriend, whom he left his wife for, is cheating on him. Plus, his son wants him to enlist. When he reads Rachel's, the woman punches him. This prompts the guards to take aim, but Bob commands them to stand down. He then heads outside to wait for their decision. If they can't decide, Bob will do it for them. That night, Doc's armed men patrol the York house while Bob watches over Mia. Inside, Ashley opens Charles's computer, only to see that there's no Wi-Fi signal. She, instead, snoops into his emails and discovers something. She then looms over the paper that has her information, which shows awful comments about her acting. This angers her. Later, everyone gathers and, immediately, Jared suggests that Noah sacrifice himself because he squandered his opportunities and killed someone in an accident. Ashley votes for Jared, given that he left his wife just because someone else gave him attention. This causes them to fight until Noah stops them. He apologizes for being a drain to the family, but since the accident, he found love and a future. He encourages them to stick together, like their dad told them to. Rachel argues that Charles practically signed one of them up for euthanasia, she declares that she won't forgive him just because he's gone. Soon, they call in Bob, only to ask how he'd decide if they can't. The representative suggests they draw straws. Rachel then asks if they'd accept if they gave them a body. After a pause, Bob says yes and leaves. After this, Rachel declares that she won't give up her life when she barely knows her siblings. With that, she produces a knife and attempts to stab Noah. He knocks the knife off her hands while Ashley checks on his wound which is just a graze. Rachel yells that Noah will just waste his inheritance on substances, adding that one less heir means more money for the rest. Jared takes her side, so Rachel tries to convince Ashley, insisting that she needs money to pursue her dream. To Noah's surprise, Ashley kicks the knife back to Rachel. She apparently learned from the email that Charles already spent $3 million to pay off the family of Noah's victim to drop the charges. The man argues that he didn't know about that, but now, everyone is against him. Jared takes a fire poker and Rachel tosses pepper spray to Ashley. They surround Noah, so the man strikes them down and runs to the next room. Jared chases him but Noah hits him with a trophy. He then faces Ashley, who sprays him and jumps on his back. Noah slams her against the wall and throws her at Rachel. As he flees, Rachel throws a knife. In the truck, Mia asks to use the restroom. While she's there sobbing, someone radios Bob, saying that they found Dawn so he can release the siblings. However, Bob orders them to take Dawn to the headquarters, right before Mia emerges from the bathroom. Meanwhile, Noah tends to his wound and tries to calm down. He then decides to send Grace one last message before tossing his phone out the window.
This takes the device out of the scrambler's range. In the truck, Mia asks what's taking them long, so Bob wagers that they're fighting. He even tells her that what people say about her mother are true. Rachel knew the medicine was defective but didn't pull it off the shelves. Angered, Mia attempts to run out the door, but a guard outside named Tony keeps it shut. Inside the house, Noah grabs makeshift weapons as he checks outside. With nobody around, he heads to the trophy room, only to find Ashley hiding behind the door. She apologizes, saying Rachel got to her head. She then warns that the others are in the living room with Dawn's knives. He decides to talk to them to make this stop. But as they leave, Ashley points at their childhood picture. This makes Noah reminisce, unaware that Ashley is looking at something behind him. Finally, Rachel ambushes him and stabs his hand into the wall. The man manages to knock both her and Jared back while Ashley runs away. Noah pulls himself off the wall and dives back to the trophy room. He then grabs a bat and throws it at Jared as he enters. Rachel lunges at him and stabs him, but the man had books between his clothes. Instead, he stabs his sister with a fork. He stumbles out of the room to find Jared approaching, so Noah picks the bat up and slams it between his legs. Noah then drags himself to the next room, only for Ashley to knock him out. In the truck, Bob defends to Mia that he's here because her grandfather invited him, encouraging her that once the great people are gone, it's her generation's turn. Mia dismisses him so he lashes out, demanding that he deserves respect after everything he's sacrificed. He then shares that his wife, who had Parkinson's, enlisted so that she won't perish for nothing. Seeing no reaction, Bob asks Mia if it's a bad thing to get rid of evil people. Mia agrees, but also points out that he also likes to watch people suffer, which the man doesn't deny. Meanwhile, Rachel, Jared, and Ashley tie up the unconscious Noah, agreeing to stab him at the same time. Ashley wonders if they should let Bob do it instead, but Rachel thinks it's a waste of time. As they position to stab him, a car horn blares. Outside, they find Grace demanding for Noah while recording on her phone. As Bob deals with them, Mia starts the truck to distract them. She then escapes, but Tony catches her and pulls her back in the truck. Ashley then tells Grace that Noah is alive while Jared orders her to go find help. Understanding the situation, Grace runs, but Bob orders his guards to stop her, prompting one to shoot her. Noah hears this, waking him up. Rachel argues that they now have a second body, but Bob insists that he came for two York bodies, so they need to finish deciding. As they leave, he scolds the guard who shot Grace, asserting that they were supposed to restrain her. When the siblings return inside, however, they find Noah and their knives missing. The power suddenly goes out, so they scramble to gather items to defend themselves with. Soon enough, Noah appears and stabs Ashley. He then overpowers Jared and stabs Rachel. Ashley drags herself away, but Noah strangles her. As she struggles, Rachel demands him to stop, asking what their dad would think of him now. The man releases Ashley, then grabs Rachel, lambasting her for talking about Charles. Finally accepting defeat, Rachel announces that she'll volunteer, admitting that she's the worst of them. Jared interjects, saying it should be him since he's the eldest and should have watched over them. He adds that he's also a bad father and husband. Ashley disagrees, arguing that his son needs him. Instead, she volunteers since she's a traitorous failure. Pissed at their sudden decisions, Noah smashes a bottle and decides that he'll get Bob. In the truck, Mia begs to see her family, though Bob just finds sordid joy in watching the kid wail in sorrow. Meanwhile, the siblings work together to cauterize Ashley's wound, with Noah apologizing for hurting her. As they close the wound, Ashley faints from the pain. Soon, Bob's watch beeps, ending the allotted time, so he goes inside with Tony. To his surprise, he finds Ashley's body. Satisfied, Bob orders the guard to get the gurney, but Ashley suddenly rises and stabs Tony on the leg. Her siblings then grab knives from the vases and hold Bob and the guard at knife point while Jared gets Tony's gun. The rest of the guards rush in, but Noah demands them to hand over their weapons to Jared. However, Ashley loses consciousness, and Bob uses the distraction to headbutt Noah, only for Jared to knock him out. Bob soon wakes up, tied to a gurney with Tony apologizing, saying that they forced them to set everything up. The leader finds himself with an IV set to administer medication, while his guards are tied up and Ashley's body is already covered. Bob remains calm and explains that if any Doc's employee is injured, they'll be jailed and the government will take their kids, leaving them in horrible living conditions. Noah then concludes that there's no reason to leave anyone alive, so he asks Mia to step outside. Before leaving, the kid comments to Bob that since his wife was a good person, they'll likely not end up in the same place. 
As she steps out, Bob negotiates that since Ashley is gone, they can just take her and forget this happened. However, Rachel pulls the cloth over the body, revealing that it's actually the guard who shot Grace. She explains that they practiced on her first, but she suffered a slow, painful end due to an air bubble in the IV, which they intend to do the same for Bob. Noah grabs the medication, and Bob desperately haggles that he can save them all by lying that Charles became violent when Dawn fled, but surrendered after. Just before Noah injects the anesthetic, Bob suddenly mentions that they have Dawn in their headquarters. Hearing that they already had Dawn yet didn't stop them from fighting, Noah chokes him. He then prepares the syringe again, while Bob pleads, yelling that the world is in a crisis and he doesn't deserve to perish because he's doing important work. However, they all deserve it for destroying the planet. With a straight face, Noah pushes the syringe. Sometime later, Noah plays the piano before an audience. Among them are his family, including a proud Dawn. Ashley, however, is not there. Instead, a commercial from Docs shows Ashley and Grace, narrating about their beautiful friendship and how they chose to enlist together to inspire others. A traumatized Bob then comments how beautiful the procedure was, revealing that the family took the deal to spare the cruel man's life, to spare their children. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.